Good day, stat students. So today we're going to get into chapter 7, and specifically we're going to start with 7.2. By starting with 7.2, I only have to describe one new thing to you instead of, instead of two new things. And so that's what I would like to start with, is section 7.2. And we're going to be talking about sampling distributions, uh, specifically for x bar, the sample mean. So imagine this, that you are sitting in class, and I ask everyone, whoever, you know, whoever's sitting in class, I ask everyone to randomly sample 50 students, and you ask them simply what their age is. So, and then I ask you to go ahead and calculate the sample mean for those 50 students. And so, notice what I've done here. I've gone ahead and uh, have X bar, a little subscript one, so that stands for the first student. The first student uh, calculated x bar for the you know for the 50 students and came up with a 19.7 for an average age <coughs> that was it that student sample mean excuse me uh, the second person I put x bar 2 they came up with 20.1 anybody have a problem with that that you know one person came up with 19.7 and then the second person is asking 50, probably asking 50 different people. I mean, some of them could be the same, but probably most of them, if not all of them, are going to be different. And he or she came up with 20.1. Anybody have a problem with that with, with regards to x-bar? No? Okay. How about x-bar 3? That person came up with 19.9. Anybody have a problem with that? You know, because it's probably 50 different people here, as long as you have a large enough uh, uh, university. Well, everybody does does this, and let's say that we had 36 students, all right, and dot, 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 and maybe the, the last person came up with 20.2, okay? And so we're learning something here, all right, um, that one, that we should be okay with this, all right, that X bar could vary, and it just depends on which people that you randomly brought into your sample, all right? So X bar varies. All right, and how does x bar vary? X bar varies from what did we just see? Sample to sample. So notice how x bar varied. Right, one came up with uh, nineteen point seven, another another person came up with twenty point one, nineteen point nine, so on and so forth, down to twenty point two. Right. So since x bar varies from sample to sample. It is a random variable just like x is. Okay, so in our problem, x was age. And we know that age varies, right? How does how does random how does x, the original random variable, vary from uh, it varies from person to person or thing to thing. And so age for one person varies from age from another person and so on and so forth. Alright? What we found out, x bar, the sample mean, also varies. But unlike x, x bar varies from sample to sample. Actually, all statistics vary from sample to sample. So remember what a statistic is. A statistic is a measurement from a sample. Right? And so all statistics vary from sample to sample. All right? um, and so x varies from person to person or thing to thing. So more on, on an individual basis, but x bar, okay, nobody, ha no individual has an x bar, okay, um, and so x bar is going to vary from sample to sample. So we studied how to x, um, and let's assume x is discrete, how x varies uh, by studying its probability distribution, its probability distribution. So remember that? And so this is saying, okay, um, here are all the different values of x, 0, 1, 2, 3, that you could possibly get for whatever, you know, uh, thing that you're doing, whatever event that, that's going on, all right? And here are the corresponding probabilities. So we see that 0 shows up 10% of the time, 1 shows up 20% of the time, 2 shows up 30% of the time, 3 shows up 40% of the time. And so... When we study how x varies, okay, we're talking about probability distribution. Now we have to study how x bar varies. And 
the name we give that now notice notice these are very similar so we have probability distribution for how x varies okay I kind of missed there how x varies sampling distributions is how statistics statistics vary all right so sampling distributions help us understand how x bar and other statistics vary all right whereas probability distributions help us understand how x is changing all right so sampling distributions what exactly are they you gotta imagine the following um, I, I kind of call this a little bit of theoretical thinking here because um, we actually aren't uh, what what we're going to need to theorize here can't actually do in practice because you're, you're going to see why here in a, in a bit so imagine the following okay you got to imagine this I ask everyone to randomly sample 50 UA students and you ask them what their age is but this is what the part that you have to imagine just imagine that for every possible sample we calculate an x-bar for each and place them all in a histogram okay the reason why we have to imagine that is because there are a whole bunch of different samples okay this is a bit mind-blowing but let's say that you had a um, a population of just a hundred things or a hundred individuals and you take a sample size of 10 the number of unique samples that you could get out of just a hundred pop people in a population and a sample size of 10 believe it or not there's 17.3 trillion different po possible unique samples you're going okay come on how, how could that be well one possible sample would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 another unique sample would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 12 and so on and so forth okay and so if you just keep on ticking that up and up and up and just slowly go through that believe it or not it's going to turn out to be 17.3 trillion different samples so just imagine for a large university that has you know 20 30 hundred thousand students on there and you take a sample size of 50 100 200 people how many different samples you can get there it's an immense number okay so what you got to imagine is that we're not going to calculate all those things but we can imagine what's going to happen okay so just imagine that we are going to go ahead and ask uh, 50 students on campus over and over and over again and collect every possible sample that we could possibly get and calculate an x-bar for each one of them all right that's what you have to imagine here all right so just imagine that for every possible sample we calculate an x-bar for each and place them into a histogram what we've just done is that once you do that we can call that the sampling distribution of x-bar all right so when you calculate an x-bar for every possible sample and put them all into a graph someplace okay you've calculated the sampling distribution of x-bar all right I notice here I put a little arrow with this uh, X bar in parentheses. That's what I'm standing for. That's a symbol that we use a lot in statistics. So anytime you see an X bar in parentheses like that, that is standing for the sampling distribution of X bar. So you're going to see that throughout the presentation. All right. So let's try to get used to that notation there. So that'll help uh, typing that out a tremendous amount of times. Okay. So, with every sampling distribution, it doesn't matter if it's a sampling distribution of x-bar or whatever statistic that you're studying, we always want to investigate three things about a sampling distribution. We always want to investigate its mean, we always want to investigate their sta standard deviation, and we want to investigate, uh, the book generically calls a shape, but really what we're talking about is which probability distribution does it look like does it look like a normal distribution that's nice and bell-shaped does it look like a um, a, uh, a binomial that's maybe skewed to the left or skewed to the right or some other probability distribution all right that we haven't studied you know that we haven't studied yet all right so let's get in the specifics of a sampling distribution of x-bar so the first one is is actually fairly simple 
Okay? What we find out is that the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar in value is equal to mu. So the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar in value is equal to mu. So what does that mean? If we could average all the possible x bars, the average would always come out to mu. Okay? So why did I why did I say in value? The reason why is I don't want you to use notation to say that the uh, the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar for a symbol is mu. No, it's it's the actual value that I want you to concentrate on. Two, what we find out is that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar. So how do those x bars vary from each other? Okay, believe it or not, is sigma which is the population standard deviation of x divided by the square root of n. And so somehow it's related to the standard deviation of x and the sample size that you took, which is kind of weird, all right? But that's the case. So we learn a couple of things about uh, just by that little formula right there. First one, as n increases, what we find out is that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution decreases. And so, so imagine this in your brain that uh, what we're talking about is that as n increases, the graph of, the, of that histogram of all those x-bars starts to condense, okay? And it starts to condense around the value of what we're going to find out around the value of mu, all right? So that's the first thing. Now, I'm going to give you an example here. So, for example, let's say that we have a sigma that is equal to 24, and n is that is equal to 36. If you go calculate this out, you got 24 divided by the square root of 36, and that's uh, third square root of 36 is 6, and so we get 4, okay? We get 4 for a standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar. Let's go increase n from 36 up to 64. So notice what's going on with n. It's going up. It's going up. And so what should happen in the standard deviation? It should decrease as n increases standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar should decrease. So you can go through the math there, but it decreases down to 3. It gets a little smaller. All right. So that's the first thing that it's indicating to us, that simple little formula there. The second one is this. The second thing is that there's a different sampling distribution of x bar at every value of n. So every time n changes, you get a different standard deviation. That means you get a different shape, okay? And uh, and once you get a different shape, you have a different sampling distribution for x bar. By the way, I want to kind of bring something up to you guys. Is that what I have found out over the years? Is that I I explain this in about three different ways. I describe it in words, like I am now, and then once I get through the words. What I found out is that students don't quite grasp it yet. Maybe you will, and that's wonderful, okay? But just keep this in mind, is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe this to you in three different ways. And hopefully by the time that we're done with the third way, that you get it, all right? So I'm going to describe it in words, all right? And then two, we're going to go ahead and run some simulations in StackCrunch. All right, so I'm going to get out of the presentation. I'm going to go over to StackCrunch. I'm going to show you the, some simulations, okay, and point things out to you, okay? And then hopefully by the, um, you understand it by then. But if you don't, the third way is that we're going to actually work through a problem. And believe it or not, one simple graph usually brings it all together, the concept of sampling distributions, all right? And it's not until about slide 21, I think 21, 22, and 23 in this presentation, do you get to there. So don't feel bad that you don't quite get it by words. Don't feel that bad that you don't get it by the simulations. But hopefully after we do a problem and we create those graphs, you know, one graph, okay, and describe what's going on with that graph, then you're going to have to say, Okay, if I don't get this, either I got to go back to the presentation or I got to, you got to come back to me and say, I, I don't get these sampling distributions. Can, can we talk about this? Okay, so hopefully by the time we get to slide 21, 22, and 23, you, you start to get it.
okay? So try to hang in there. Try your best to understand it now, okay? But cut yourself a little bit of a break if you don't quite understand it right away. Just take some notes, okay? And try to follow along as best as you possibly can, all right? All right, uh, so the third thing that we have to talk about, so we talked about the mean, we talked about the standard deviation. The third thing that we have to talk about uh, is which probability distribution does it take on? What shape? Okay. So there's two parts to this. The first part says the following. Regardless how large the sample size is, the sampling distribution of X bar will be approximately normal. It may be exactly normal. It might be approximately normal, depending on the situation that you got. If X is normal. So basically, if X is normal, okay, what's going to happen is that uh, the shape is going to be bell-shaped in some way, shape, or form. And it could be a normal, it could be approximately normal, okay? Um, you might be asking, well, what's the difference between normal and approximately normal? That That's something that we'll bring up in Chapter 8 and Chapter 9, all right? But for right now, note that if basically X is normal and you sample from it, uh, the sampling distribution of X bar will be basically normal. The second one, oh, the second one is really important statistics. We couldn't do a lot of stuff in statistics without rule number two. All right, so rule number two is really, really important. I, I should have put like a star here or an asterisk or something because this one is really, really important. Okay, what happens if X is not normal? So certainly there's a whole bunch of random variables out there, X, that is not normal, that is not bell-shaped. Okay. It might be skewed left or skewed right, or it's not even taking on one of the shapes that we even talked about. Okay. Well, what we found out is that the sampling distribution of X bar will be approximately normal, even in those situations, as long as the sample size is large enough. And what we find out is that as long as N is greater than or equal to 30, the sampling distribution of X bar will be approximately normal, no matter what the original distribution of X was. And we call this, we give it a name even, we call this the sampling distribution for the sampling distribution of X bar. And the reason why I say for X, for the sampling distribution of X bar is because the central limit theorem actually applies to more than just X bar. It, it applies to a lot of different situations. And so this rule right here, this N being greater than or equal to 30, all right, I'll just point it out to you right now, applies to this guy right here for the sampling distribution of X bar. So the central limit theorem applies when N is greater than or equal to 30 for the sampling distribution of X bar, something that you'll, you'll want to memorize, okay? So this is the point in time that I'm done with the words, okay? And it's just time to look at some simulations. Okay, so I'm going to get out of the presentation here. So we'll go ahead and discard that, and I'm going to get into StackCrunch. Okay, so let's take a look at StackCrunch. StackCrunch has uh, this, I, this, these applets here, and I'm going to get into sampling distributions. Okay. This is wonderful because when I was uh, going through statistics the very first time, we didn't have a we didn't have computers to be able to run simulations in a in a classroom and lab, laptops and, and students having the ability to do this from home, and and uh, and checking this out and stuff, um, and so this is a wonderful tool to help us understand and visualize sampling distributions because even though theoretically we cannot do it we can have a computer simulate this stuff because a computer can generate a millions of samples in a few seconds, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to start off with a nice bell-shaped distribution. And we'll put in here 115. So, all right. So let me describe to you what's going on here. This right here is X, okay? What is X here? Maybe X is IQs or something like that, okay? And so IQs tend to be nice and bell-shaped if you put enough of them together, all right? 
And so uh, the middle of it is 100, okay? That's what I put as uh, the mean. This is mu. This guy right here is mu because this is the mean of all the x's, okay? So if you averaged all the IQs for whatever population that you're taking a look at, it averaged out to 100. Oh, why did it change? You know what, I think I, I'm going to go back here. I think I accidentally uh, hit something there. I'm going to, there we go, I'm going to reset it. Okay, so if you went ahead and looked at the entire population, you took the IQs for all of them and you averaged them all out, 100, that's mu. The standard deviation, the standard deviation of all these guys, okay, uh, turned out to be 15. Okay, so notice one, two, three standard deviations, you're basically at the end of the graph. Okay, over here, one, two, three standard deviations, you're basically at the end of the graph over here. Okay? All right, so notice right here, we have a sample size of two. Sample size of two. So what does that mean? That means if I go ahead and sample from this population, it'll take a sample of two people. And so the computer just randomly generated this. It randomly uh, uh, basically sampled a person uh, that was about right here in the population and another one right here. Okay, and it went ahead and calculated x bar for that particular sample. So that's the x bar of a sample size of two from that first sample. Well, remember sampling distributions, you've got to do that a whole bunch of times, right? Remember, remember when we did this uh, repeatedly for uh, 50 uh, students and everybody did that? Okay, but well, we got to do this again. So we did that again. This time, the computer chose a person from here. And about here in the population distribution, here's the x-bar for that person, okay? And so it's combining all the x-bars together, and when we combine all the x-bars together, what are we creating? We're creating the sampling distribution of x-bars. So, the so these are all the, all the different x-bars being put together. So we do it again. We do it again, okay? Well, in order to start seeing these histograms, you got to do this a lot of times, okay? Notice this button right here, it says a thousand times. So if I hit this button, the computer's gonna generate a thousand samples just like that. And it's gonna put all those different X bars here. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do that quite a few times. So I'm gonna generate about 30,000 different samples. All right, so 30,000 X bars are being placed right in here, okay? But that's not what we wanna concentrate on. What we wanna concentrate on is, well, let's see here. First of all, what did we say? Now, you might, uh, might want to uh, look at your notes that you've been taking, or you might want to pause this if you did not print out the slides, all right? Uh, and you may want to look back to what I'm talking about. What did I say was going to be the mean, the average of all those X bars? What did they were going to average out to be, okay? They were going to average out to be, what, 100. So notice, if you look at the mean, the average of all those x bars, what did it turn out to be? It roughly turn out to be 100. Now, you're saying, why didn't it exactly equal? Because I would have to hit this button a heck of a lot more times to make it equal exactly 100. Okay, and so um, at some point in time it would. Okay, but uh, for right now, it's getting closer and closer to it. All right. Second thing, how about the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x-bar? So, remember what I told you there. I told you that the standard deviation of all these values should be sigma, which is this number, divided by 2, the sample size of all those samples. All right? And so what we should, uh, if you got your calculator, get your calculator out. Maybe pause the video, get your calculator out. All right? So hopefully you got your calculator and do this calculation with me. Take sigma, which is 15, and divide by the square root of 2, the sample size of all. That was the sample size of all the different um, uh, samples over here. All right. So divide by the square root of 2. So I just did that in my calculator. So I came up with 10.6. 10.6. So notice here, if you rounded this to two, de uh, rounded this to one decimal place, right? The second decimal place is six, so we round this up to what? 10.6. Okay. 
So uh, there's demonstrating the sampling distribution of X-bar with regards to its standard deviation. The third thing that I want to point out to you guys is that, let's see, X started off to be fairly normal looking, right? It's nice and bell shaped. It's normal looking, right? And what did the first, first rule say with regards to the sampling distribution of X bar and its probability distribution? Well, if this is normal, then this should be normal. So if that's normal, this should be normal. Or at least approximately normal, right? And it looks like, you know, barring the bad graphics, we have a nice bell shaped curve here. Okay? All right. So now, hopefully you got that. Stick with me, all right? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the sample size from 2 up to 50, okay? Let's think of what's going to happen to the sampling distribution of x-bar down here. So its mean should still be what? It should still be centered at 100, that our graph down here. Okay, it sh still should be centered at 100, all right? because the mean of the sampling distribution of x-bar is always going to be equal to mu, okay? The second thing is, is that, uh, let's see, we increase the sample size. We increase the sample size. So what should happen to the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x-bar should go down. There, I, I showed you that in one of, the, one of the slides. So as n increases, the standard deviation of all those x-bars goes down. And what should happen to the graph if the standard deviation is going to go, go down? Is it going to get wider, or is it going to get more condensed? Well, hopefully you say, if the standard deviation is going down, that means that it's getting more and more condensed around the value of mu, around the value of 100, all right? And then the third thing is should be bell-shaped still, all right? Now, you're going to see some really poor graphics here, and it's going to be hard to see that it's bell-shaped, but Trust me, it's going to be. So let's do uh, one sample here. So the computer just randomly picked 50 people from here, okay? And it calculated the average for all those 50 people, okay? And there's the X bar for that sample. Do it again, right? Do it again, 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 right? Well, we would have to, in order to start to see shape, we would have to do this several times. Let's do that several times. So I just did this. 30,000 times again. Let's take a look at stuff. Okay, so the mean turned out to be, boy, it's getting closer and closer to notice. Now when you take it out to two decimal places, it's 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 100.00, right? Okay, so the mean of all those X bars is equal to 100, the value of mu. Okay, about the standard deviation, let's get our calculators back out. Got to do another calculation here. What are we going to do this time? We're going to take 15, but instead of dividing by the square root of 2, we're going to divide by the square root of 50, whatever our sample size was for all those different x bars. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 15 divided by the square root of 50. We close that parenthesis. What do I get here? I get 2.1213. The reason why I took it out so far is because notice here it says. 2.1212. Boy, I'm awfully darn close already. Okay. And notice what happened to the graph. It got a lot more condensed, right? Because the standard deviation went down as the sample size went up. Okay. And this is kind of hard to see, but uh, I'm sure if you put this into a nice histogram that had nice graphics, this would be nice and bell shaped. Nice and bell shaped. Okay. All right, and so, uh, and the reason why that's happened was because it came from a population, the original population was normal, okay? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and edit this, and start, instead of starting with a bell-shaped distribution, let's start off with an extremely skewed right distribution. So we would uh, sort of call this, this is close to what we call the exponential distribution, which is highly skewed. Okay, this is, you know, goes up, straight up, right at the beginning, and then, right, goes, goes down like that. So this is looking like an exponential distribution that's highly skewed to the right. Okay, that's our population. Okay, 
Here, mu is equal to 14.0519. Standard deviation, sigma, is 11.8255. So there's mu and there's sigma. Okay, let's start off with a sample size of 2. Now, notice what's going to happen here is that I'm going to go ahead and make the sampling distribution. Remember, this again is the sampling distribution of x bar. And we're gathering up all those x bars into one spot. Okay. And we're making the sampling distribution when the sample size is just simply 2. Okay. So I created 30, uh, 33,000 samples. All right. So notice that the mean is close to one another. 15.05 to 15.02. The standard deviation, I'm sure if you put in your calculator 11.8255 and divided by the square root of 2, you'd probably get close to this 8.3109. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We were doing the other calculations. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, 11.8255 divided by the square root of 2. I get 8.36, so 8.31. Still has a little ways to go. Okay, but it's getting closer and closer. Notice here, though, the sampling distribution of x bar did not turn to be normal. It didn't turn out to be normal. Why not? Well, remember what I said is that if we start off with a population distribution that's skewed left or skewed right, here skewed right, that uh, the sampling distribution of x bar will not turn normal uh, unless the sample size was large enough. Do you remember what the sample size? needs to be needed to be 30 or greater for the sampling distribution of x bar to turn approximately normal. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and increase the sample size, let's say up to 64. Alright. And let's see what happens. So what should happen now? What theorem should apply now? Do you remember what theorem I said this was? The central limit theorem should apply. What does it say? That when you start off with a population that's either skew left or skew right, that the sampling distribution of x bar down here should turn approximately normal when n is greater than or equal to 30. And here it's going to be 64. So I take a sample of uh, 64 people from here, and the x bar that turned up is that one right there. Okay, we do that again, we do that again, we do that again, we do that again, we do that a whole bunch of times. Let's do that maybe uh, 40,000 times. There we go. So we did that about 40,000 times. All right. Let's take a look now. Let's see here. Mu was equal to 14.05. Well, mu down here is equal to 14.04. Pretty close. It's getting closer and closer to it. It's awfully close to it right now. Okay. So wherever this mean is, this is where this should be centered at. And it is. Okay. Next thing, let's get our calculators back out. Let's put in there sigma of 11.8255, and we'll divide that by the square root of 64, which is which is 8, right? Let me go ahead and put that in there. I got here 1.48, uh, rounded to two decimal places. So notice here 1.4. Actually, it's it's 9 rounded to two decimal places, but pretty darn close. Right, and then the, maybe maybe the most important thing is is that notice that the central limit theorem started to apply. N is greater than or equal to 30 at 64. What happened to all those x bars when we put them all into a histogram? It turned out to be a nice, normal-looking curve, at least approximately normal. Okay, so hopefully the demonstrations there, the simulations helped you to understand and kind of visualize this stuff, okay? Now, if not, I have one more way of showing it to you. Hopefully, by the time we're done with slide, uh, I think it's 23, that you got a pretty good handle of it, and, okay? So let's, let's go back to the presentation. All right, so let's see, the slideshow, current slide. All right, so we have to get through that. Let's go to the next slide. So here's an example. It says here, there's a concern of how fast people in cars are driving the Ohio Turnpike. So we're only looking at, at cars, not trucks. Okay. Uh, uh, assume that the speed of all cars, 
car drivers on the Ohio Turnpike are normal. Maybe I should should say is normal, whatever. Uh, but let's see here. Let me get my pen out. Or you could say uh, normally distributed. Okay. So if you see normally distributed, it means normal, right? So what does that mean? If we were able to take all the speeds of all the cars on the Ohio Turnpike, okay, it's going to be normal looking. It's going to be a nice bell-shaped curve. Okay. So here are all the X's. And what do we find out? It says it has a mean of 80. So let's see, since it's all the cars, that's mu. So what do we just find out? Mu is equal to 80. And a standard deviation, what is that? Since it's for all of them, that's sigma. That's equal to what? 4. Okay. So I kind of spell all this stuff out also on the next slide. So here, x, that's our random variable. That was the thing that varies from person to person or thing to thing here. It would be speed, right? That would be speed. That's x. We found out that x has a mean of 80, a standard deviation of 4. And then it says here we take a random uh, we take random samples of 100 uh, car drivers repeatedly over and over and over and over again. So what's our sample size for all those samples? 100. So here's the question. Here's the first question, anyways. What is the probability distribution? What's the shape of the sampling distribution of x bar? Well, let's see. Since x is normal, what does that mean about the sampling distribution of x bar? It's also going to be a normal, or at least approximately normal. Okay? That was fairly simple. How about the next question? Next question is what is the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar? Well, the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar should have the same exact value of mu. Whatever mu was, this answer should be. So what did we find out mu was? Mu was 80. So what should be the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar? All it is, it's equal to 80. That's where the, its graph is going to be centered at. It's going to be centered at 80. Okay. But the third question, the third question, we need to know about the standard deviation. What is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar? Now, be careful on this. It's not, it's not 4. What do we have to do? We have to take 4 and divide it by what? The square root of 100. So notice I have sigma divided by the square root of n. It's 4 divided by the square root of 100. So it's 4 divided by 10. That's what? 0.4. OK? So the standard deviation of all those x bars turned out to be 0.4. All right? So now, hopefully, this next, these next set of slides Okay, we'll get you to understand what's going on with the sampling distribution of x bar and what we're trying to achieve by doing all this. So let's make a graph. So here is a graph of the sampling distribution of x bar. All right, and so what we said was that its mean should be right there in the center, 80. Okay. We said that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, which is sigma divided by the square root of n, is equal to 0.4. Not 4, but 0.4. Right? Oh, well, by the way, we have a nice bell-shaped curve here. Why? Because we said that the shape was approximately normal, or, or maybe in this situation, normal. Okay? So I drew a nice bell-shaped curve here. I have it centered at 80. And notice here that standard deviation is 4, so we go out, uh, excuse me, 0.4. So we went out 0.4 units here, another 0.4 units, another 0.4 units there. Let's go out and standard deviation this way, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0.4. Okay, here's the drum roll, okay? So we put those three ideas together now. We have a probability distribution, we have where it's centered, and we have it in, we have the standard deviation down. All right. So let's draw a line right here at one standard deviation out. Let's draw this line right here. And let's draw this line right here. 
So notice I just went out one standard deviation. So here's my question. What percentage of all the samples would have a uh, would produce a an X bar somewhere between 79.6 and 80.4? So let me say that again. What percentage of the samples would produce an X bar between 79.6 and 80.4? And hopefully you go, hold on, I have a bell-shaped curve. It just went out one standard deviation. That should be what? Approximately 68%. Let me get my eraser out here. So about 68% of all possible samples of size 100, size 100, will produce a sample mean between 79.6 and 80.4. Alright, let's go out one more standard deviation. So, let's see, 79.2, 80.8, what percentage of all the samples were produced in X-bar between these two points? Hopefully you say about 95%, the second rule to the empirical rule. So about 95% of all possible samples of size 100 produce a sample mean between what, 79.2 and 80.8. All right, what about the third one? Oh, I lost my pen. Here we go. Let's go out one more standard deviation. So we should be at the edge of the graphs now, right? So what percentage of samples will produce a sample mean between 78.8 and 81.2? Hopefully you say, oop, 99.7%. Now we have an understanding of how X bar varies from sample to sample, and how and and uh, where are the values of X bar going to fall, and how often are they going to fall there? Okay, that was the whole purpose of a sampling distribution, is to understand how X bar now varies from sample to sample. Notice, um, notice something here. And I'm going to show you a graph of this, is that X varies a lot more than X bar does. X can vary a lot more than X bar does, because remember the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar is going to be divided, it's sigma, whatever the standard deviation of X is, divided by the square root of N. So as your N gets larger and larger and larger, okay, that standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar gets lower, and it's going to get more and more condensed, and uh, the graph is going to get more condensed, right? And the possible values of X bar, the range starts to decrease more and more and more, okay? So, what I've done here is I simulated uh, some data. What is this here? This has a mean of 80, all right? standard deviation of 4. I think I made a, a million different possible simulations here. Okay, So I made a nice little population for X. All right, has a mean of 80 and standard deviation of 4. Notice, let's see, 84, right, would maybe be about, what, right about here, then 88, right about here, 92, and then you virtually start, then you have very little out here, remember? And then 76, 72, 68, way out here, okay, and then you virtually have, you know, I, I won't say nothing, but remember, it's, it's going to be very small compared to how much is in here, right? Notice the sampling distribution of X bar, so this down here is the sampling distribution of X bar, so believe it or not, let me go back, this right here, this graph right here, is being represented by this guy down here. Okay, this is the original value. So I put it on the same scale though. Notice the scale from here is 60 to 100. The scale down here is 60 to 100. So notice how X varies a lot more than X bar does. X bar is very much contained between here and here. Okay, and what are those two points? And basically, what those two points are what? 78.8 and 81.2.
but X, X itself though can get all the way out here to 92 and even even if you had these extreme outliers out here maybe you even get 98 and down here all the way down to 60 okay this bar can't do that it's very much contained okay true it can get out a little bit further it can get out a little bit further here a little bit further here whatever okay but for the most part that's where they're going to most of those X bars going to be contained so here's the thing is that um, uh, remember when I told you that when we had a population of 100 and a sample size of 10 how many unique samples that we could get we can get 17.3 trillion well guess what I don't care I don't care that we can get that many X bars all right why because I know that 68 percent of them will be contained between you know I'll just start here here and here I know 95 percent of them will be contained from here to here and that practically all of them will be contained between 78.8 and 81.2 and we're going to use this idea okay again and again and again in inferential statistics which is coming up very soon in chapter 8 I have one more example for you okay so here example number two weight for male US adults are skewed to the right all right the mean of 186 pounds a standard deviation of 40 I just kind of made that up and I just based that upon the data that I saw in our uh, uh, in, the, in the lab file okay I just made that up but I do know for a fact that weights are skewed to the right we take random samples of 256 male adults in the US all right so uh, let's think about a couple of things here so X is no longer nice and bell shaped what is it it's not it's skewed to the right it has a mean of 180 what are we gonna what are we gonna name that Hopefully you say that's mu. Standard deviation of 40. Hopefully you name that sigma. Okay. Assume that this is for an entire population. Okay. And then we take a ran random samples of 256 U.S. adults male repeatedly over and over and over and over again. So that's what. What is that? That's n. That's our sample size. So we got. X being the weight for a U.S. adult male. When you put them all together, they average out to 186. It has a standard deviation of 40. And we decided to take a uh, repeated samples of 256. Question, what is the probability distribution of the sampling distribution of X bar? Hmm. Well, let's see. X isn't normal, it's skewed to the right. However, what's going to apply? What theorem again? The central limit theorem, the CLT. Okay, we're going to abbreviate that CLT as we go forward. All right, uh, but um, it's called the central limit theorem. And when does it apply for the sampling distribution of X bar when N is greater than or equal to 30? What's N here? 256. All right, so that's what I wrote there. So what does that mean? That uh, sampling distribution of x-bar is approximately normal. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of x-bar? It should be whatever the value of mu is. 186. Okay. Third thing, what is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x-bar? So that should be sigma divided by the square root of n. So that should be 40 divided by 256, uh, square root of 256. Let's see, this two, square root of 256 is 16, I think. So let's see, that's 40 divided by 16. That turns out to be 2.5 for standard deviation. Okay. So. What should we do next? We should make a graph of this. Okay, so here's the here is the sampling distribution of x bar. This is not of x. This is the sampling distribution of x bar. Where's it centered at? 186, right? And that's what we said the mean was. And then what did we say the standard deviation was? We said the standard deviation was 2.5. So notice we started at 186 in the middle, 
we drew a nice bell-shaped curve because the central limit theorem applied, right? And we know that the center of the sampling distribution of x bar when it's approximately normal, right in the center, should be its, its mean of 186. Then we got one standard deviation this way. We would be at 188.5, then 191, then 193.5. Go out 2.5 that way, 2.5, 2.5. So now we filled in the axis. All right. So these are the different values that x bar can take on. Okay for the most part. And what do we find out? If we drew a line here, straight up, we drew a line here, straight up all the way up to here, okay, what percentage of samples will be contained in there? Well, about 68% of all possible samples of size 256 will produce a sample mean between here, 183.5 and 188.5. About 95% of all possible samples of size 256 will produce a sample mean between what? 181, so two standard deviations out here, and what? 191. And then go out one more standard deviation. About 99.7% of all possible samples of 256 will produce a sample mean between what? 178.5 and 193.5. Okay, and what I did was is that I put <coughs> those, uh, I put the population distribution up here, this is of x, and this is the sampling distribution of x bar. So I simulated, okay, with the computer, and notice here, let's see, this is skewed to the right, and so remember, technically the mode would be you know, here's the highest frequency, and so you drop this straight down. The mode would be about right there. Remember where the median would be? The median would be here, and where would the mean be? Over, even further than the uh, uh, the median, okay? And it would be actually about right about here, okay? Because why? Because that's where this is centered at. This is the sampling distribution of x bar, and this was at 186, okay? So that's where the mean is here, right? The standard deviation, oh, by the way, notice that it's not looking beautifully bell-shaped, right? There's, there's, notice the simulations here, it's still a little, I don't know, a little, little off, right? And you're going to get that. But this is approximately normal, according to, so, if you were able to draw, oh, goodness gracious, let me just get rid of that. That just looks an awful drawing there. Let's get rid of that. Um, it's nice and bell-shaped. Okay, it's nice and bell-shaped. All right. And then, so the central limit theorem is applying. All right. And then the standard deviation is much smaller here than it is here. Even though x can vary from all the way from over here to all the way over here. Okay. The sampling distribution of x bar cannot. It is very much contained between here and here. So this graph right here, okay, believe it or not, is the same as this graph right here. All right, it's just on a different scale. This one had to. Uh, I put them on both the same scale on this one, uh, and x is very much can be out, way way over here or way down here. Okay, or x bar, mm, you can't. Okay, that's why this looks so much uh, more condensed. It is because that standard deviation is so much smaller. Okay, so that ends the presentation. All right, and what we're going to do in 7.1 is that we're going to see how proportions, how percentages from one sample to another vary. All right, so thank you for your time today.